Today, I'm putting all three Hoyland brothers on the same team and forcing them to be teammates for their entire career. Can the Great Danes become national heroes and achieve world domination together? Or is this going to be a messy family affair where we wait for a miracle every season? Let's find out as we take over the Hoyland trio's lives. And what makes it even better is that if one Hoyland brother accepts a transfer move away, every other brother has to follow him to the team he signs for. So that means we're going to keep the three time Hoyland family legacy intact for every campaign. So there are going to be massive stakes for every transfer window as I've reunited them back at Copenhagen, their hometown club, where it all began and that's exactly where his other two brothers are currently at in real life. They're not going to get any game time whatsoever at Manchester United. So Rasmus has come home and grabbed that captain's armband and at least for one season he's going to have a final farewell stint in Denmark. However, his other two younger brothers, Oscar and Emil, who I think are twins, they're both 18 and have the same exact potential of 76. It's not exactly ideal considering Rasmus's whopping 89 potential. He's an exciting prospect. On the bright side, he has a meal to be a little brother strike duo up front and Oscar provides something different to the both of them. He's just a midfield general, midfield commander. They've still got plenty of time to grow and plenty of seasons to prove themselves. We're getting them all on that development plan just straight away and thanks to the realism mod, I've got even more plans to play with. I'm thinking of just going something completely different because I've used every single one of them before. Let's go for the football manager special, the Metzala. We need rapid improvement in every department, especially for the two younger brothers. So we're going to train up Emil into a deep lying forward, focusing on his strength, composure, and vision on the ball. And I was umming and ahhing about Trequartista, but I just wanted to focus on Poacher to get that five-star weak foot and hopefully turn him into a Ballon d'Or contender in future years. They came up against each other in the Champions League and now they're back where it all began. Not only on club level are they going to be battling it out, but in the Danish national team, thankfully they're actually in the game. Rasmus is already starting up front for the senior squad, but we need to work on those other two to make sure they get that national team call up. We gotta do it for the cause, we gotta do it for the culture, but let's bring on season one. Here goes nothing. Ah, that's it. I see the vision so far. Still early doors. We're about to see the fruits of the Hoyland's labor. With the return of the brother trio, we have seen them come first in the Danish Superliga, which kind of like breaks off into like a second phase halfway through the season, similar to how Belgium do it. They also did win the championship round with 66 points, establishing their dominance and the Hoyland brothers back to the homeland and back dominating. And the league success also translated to the cup as they took home the Odset Pokaland, the Danish FA Cup, in a 4-2 win against Viborg in the final. Coming through strong domestically, however, in the Champions League continentally, Rasmus's former club, Manchester United, have made the big dance but they didn't have that great of a time in the group stages with Galatasaray coming out on top. They were bottom with three points. How'd they stack up though? You can do all the celebrating and partying you want domestically, but we need to see progression and growth from the Hoyland brothers every season. So we're taking a look at the top goal scorer and it's going to be Rasmus leading by example. Certain 21 scored 17 goals and one assist, growing a plus five overall boost. Seeing him enter the 80s with an average match rating of 7.19, that is decent and he formed the lovely little combo up front with his brother Emil netting 10 times and the brothers up front between them scored 27 goals which is lovely. A perfect way to start their careers back together and his overall boosted a massive plus 6 standing at a 62. Unfortunately though Oscar is struggling he's drowning in midfield by himself only with 14 appearances which isn't ideal however Oscar has come through with 7 goal contributions providing 6 assists 1 goal which now sees the Mazala at a 65 overall. He's also out of international duty for the first time without his brothers for the 2024 Euros and I thought we had the accurate groups but Denmark drawn into Group D alongside Germany, the Czech Republic and Wales. You never know, maybe, just maybe, they could be a little dark horse in the tournament. Even though Paulson has overtaken him in the starting striker role, let's see if he can climb up the rankings again. He's not balling out with his brothers so it's not really hitting the same but officially that's season one done and dusted in the books and Euro 2024 officially complete which sees Spain go out to win it. I swear I always see Spain win the Euros in career mode with a 2-1 win over the Netherlands in the big dance and something I also always see is Denmark being dark horses making it all the way to the semis but that wasn't to be either with a group D disaster class 3 points couldn't finish in the top 2 so no quarterfinals action that was just a nightmarish display yeah when you don't have that brotherly connection Denmark that's what happens as Rasmus actually scored all 3 of the country's goals 3 appearances 3 goals at least a game in every single match 
match. Just to make sure that transfer offers come our way, we have put every single brother up for sale on the transfer list. We're open to receiving it all, and it's going to be first come, first served. Whoever bids first is going to get them. Now, we already know that clubs have been plotting for these guys. We've received the 3.15 million pound bid from Sheffield Wednesday. I did say it's first come, first serve. It's actually under his value, but I'm going to accept it. The championship is probably the best place for the younger other two brothers, the twins, to develop. And if this goes through, it could be monumental. And it is because Oscar has got not himself, but all three brothers a move to England's second tier. And Sheffield Wednesday will be the Hoyland Trio's brand new home. In season two, all three of them are leaving Denmark. And there you go, it's confirmed. Don't you worry, his twin brother and his big brother are both following him across to join Sheffield Wednesday. Rasmus is making his return to England, hoping to find more miracles in the process. And there you have it, it's a Hoyland invasion over here in the second tier. I've made my mind up, we're gonna keep things the same, this winning formula of the Hoyland duo up front. And then we've got Oscar running the show in the middle of the field and being the engine room of the team. This season, I wanna focus Oscar's game around his weak foot, so I'm gonna apply him on that deep line playmaker development plan. Emil, again, I want that five-star weak foot to be a complete forward. Nevertheless, we're applying that advanced forward training for season two to see if this trio can adapt and change to the English physical game. Now, on a team level, the Great Danes couldn't muster up that much of an impact. I mean, this is the kind of team we're dealing with. Sitting in 10th, they've nearly pushed for that playoff spot. However, couldn't burst into the top six. Everton on top with 114 points. Sheffield Wednesday with 68. There's a pretty huge gap between them and the top, but it is what it is. They avoided relegation, and they were just on the grind as they made a deep run in the FA Cup to round five, losing our 5-1 to Manchester City, so you can see the golfing class. However, it's not about the team, it's about the Hoyland brothers, but there are no pieces of silverware to show for. Was the championship the right move? Is this where they should see their future? All other brothers living on Struggle Street because the top goal scorer, of course, was Rasmus Hoyland. Even in a mediocre second-tier squad, he can still bang him in 33 goals and 3 assists. Over 30 miracles for the Great Dane up front and his brother Emil, who joined him in the strike force, 9 goals and 2. That saw him rise a plus 8 and was probably one of the best growers. Rasmus again, plus 5s back to back, getting a 10 overall upgrade in 2 seasons. But Oscar Hoyland though, he was an absolute dictator. A commando in midfield, not only getting goals but assists in abundance. 20 goal contribution, 16 assists, 4 goals. He is the out and out playmaker, the 4, sitting in front of the defense, being a crucial midfielder, making things happen, giving the team the tick. And he earned himself a plus 8 upgrade too, shooting himself up to 74 overall. And three of them are now in the top four highly ranked players at the club. And Emil is now showing great potential, which you love to see. Oscar's values increased 430%. Meanwhile, Emil is sitting at 308. As I'm after Rasmus to focus on his skill moves. I want five star, five star in both categories and him to improve his passing and dribbling aspects of his game. We all know scoring goals isn't the problem for Rasmus, but it is kind of the case for Emil. So we're going to place him on the advanced forward training, focusing on his pace shooting. We're going to train Oscar as a roaming playmaker. Another one of these new development plans I want to try out and keep them running amok in this Sheffield United squad for the foreseeable future. There might be many more moments like this to come, but we're just getting a taste of what the Hoyland trio can cook up. And right now we've got Rasmus winning the championship player of the season. So you already know he has taken over the second tier by storm. Realistically, if it wasn't for this experiment, he'd probably be playing in the Champions League or something. But yeah, he is just taking home all the individual awards and he wants to carry that into the World Cup year because it's 2026 and there you go Sheffield Wednesday promoted to the Premier League sitting in second with that automatic spot from 10th to second in the space of one season 86 points and the question is do we stay here do the Hoyland brothers stay loyal to the Wednesday or should they seek for a bigger move away as in the FA Cup they were knocked out in round four to Colchester 1-0 and the Carabao Cup they didn't make it too far either okay round four is decent though 2-1 lost to Spurs. Both him and his brother, all three of his brothers actually nominated for the Player of the Month award in May. They peaked when they needed to and Hoyland wins the golden boot in the championship with 26 goals. However, in all competitions again he was the top goal scorer 30 and 2 assists. An average 7.3 match rating. He's entered the 90s and could possibly be in contention for the Ballon d'Or in 2026. His brother up front with him scored 12 and between them had 42 goals. A plus 5 for a 
Mill, which sees him now at 21. He's still showing great potential. And our boy Oscar in the middle of the park has been the first out of the three brothers to contribute double figures in both departments. He can do it both with 23 goal contributions, 11 goals, 12 assists. So we've got three different brothers in all three different tiers. One in the 90s, one in the 70s, and one in the 80s. They've truly struck a great balance with all three being promotion protagonists with Rasmus almost hitting that 200 million pound mark. The Hoyland boys are up and there is nothing you can do about it. Did Denmark qualify for the 2026 World Cup though? That is yet to be seen as we scroll down. No, they didn't. Oh my goodness me. What an absolute disaster. We're going to have to wait till 2030. They could have all had a case to being called up. Even a mil. That is terrible. There is barely even 30 national teams in the game and they still managed to fumble. What does that say? about Danish football right now. What is going on? He actually won Hoyland. He is starting in midfield and that's Oscar. Rasmus has lost his starting spot to wins. However, this summer transfer market might throw a few spanner in the works. They've reached the Premier League on their own merit with the family affair. And I'm sure we're going to have a lineup outside the door of clubs that want one of them. Now look at the decision we have to make for ourselves here. At the start of season four, we've already received two offers and Oscar has gotten one alongside Rasmus, who of course has gotten the callback from Manchester United 157.6 million pounds no they're trying to include Bruno Fernandes in the deal I've just got to consider the future and the career trajectory for all three I don't want to drag the other two brothers into the toxic old Trafford environment I want their career path to have kind of a different story I don't want to follow the road back to Manchester so we're gonna to have to just cop trying to win trophies with Spurs I'm going to accept this Oscar deal and if it goes through all three of them are moving now it looks like yeah the sale is successful Successful. And Oscar will be the one again this time to trigger the move away for both of his brothers. And now the trio are leaving for London, North London specifically. And Tottenham is standing on business right now, signing up a quality Ballon d'Or type of player. He's a generational talent in this save. You know what it is by now. You know the rules. If one brother goes, the team get the whole package unannounced. They're going to show up to the front door and demand they play in the same team. Because family sticks together, Hoyland stick together, the Premier League best. Danes are here to take over. Now just imagine if they had a decent Summer World Cup campaign to bounce off of and carry the momentum into the new season as we transition into another team that only play with one striker. So fitting all these brothers into this Spurs team is going to be a challenge. There's a new king in town with Rasmus starting up front. He's probably the only guaranteed player in the starting 11. Meanwhile, the twin younger brothers, they're going to have to fight for their spot in the first team and really earn their way up the ranks because there is just so much competition right now at the club with 48 players like who is doing the team management what kind of cpu action is this do they have any kind of quality control at the club and it doesn't look so because look half the team their contracts are expired like this is the kind of stuff i have to deal with behind the scenes like what is going on nevertheless i'll sort it out i'll get it done the hoylands are now fully focused on winning trophies and the only way we're going to do that is by improving them on and off the pitch as rasmus is going to be applied on the deep line forward training improving that passing category he's weakest area. Oscar, the man who Spurs wanted in the first place, is going to be applied as an advanced playmaker. I want him to have that five-star skills in midfield and just be a dynamic asset in the middle of the park. Meanwhile, we've just got to hone in on ML's shooting category because that's his weakest area and if you're bad at shooting, being a striker, you're going to have a tough life. Now, these brothers, they haven't experienced any silverware success since they were in Denmark, their hometown. And it's just amazing to see them actually win a trophy outside of Denmark. And to do it with Spurs too is a feat like no other. Wait, did they go on a win the lot? I saw three trophies there and it was. The Premier League wrapped up on the final day by one point. They didn't bottle it like Arsenal. They stood on business and English champions the Hoyland Trio. Who would have saw that coming? I thought, you know, signing with United or City could have got them more chances of silverware with their former employers Sheffield Wednesday going down and they actually took home the FA Cup too with an easy layup in the final at Wembley 4-1 against Luton Town to secure the double. And they were one game away from a potential shot at the treble with a 4-2 elimination in the semi-final over two legs in the Carabao. They did play some European football, so it was their debut in the Europa League where they took it home 2-0 in the final against Real Batiste. And they stormed all the way from the group stage to the big dance. And I guess it's like a Mickey Mouse treble. It's not quite the quintessential treble. But Spurs are winning silverware and the Hoyland brothers are absolutely cooking up a storm. He's number one at the club the best outfield player with a 92 overall and he's now one of the world's best 92 overall premier league champion his brothers though they're a little bit further down the pecking order with oscar
Kafka, only a rotational player, receiving a plus two overall boost, which so far is their lowest growth yet. And Emil, who hasn't been receiving the great game time, he has actually grown the most with a plus three, 25 appearances, three goals and one assist. He was a backup dancer. He played a very minimal role. However, the big bro came through, finding them back in the net 33 times, two goals in a much better team, and also in a team that's scoring way more goals at the top level. 35 goal contributions, an average 7.25 match rating, but that's the kind of performance you expect out of a player that is that highly rated and just at an elite level. Meanwhile, Oscar took a little bit of a back seat, made a few cameos, 43 appearances all up with five goals and nine assists, 14 goal contributions in this Spurs side where there is just so many world-class competitive players. The Danish connection is strong between him and his brothers and Pierre-Emil Hoiberg in the middle of the park, who is kind of deteriorating. So it'll be cool to see him take the mantle piece. However, he did lose a bit of value this campaign, going down 16%. I'm not quite sure what to do with him. He's like the odd one out. Hmm, it's going to take way too long converting him to a winger. Maybe a center forward might rejuvenate his career. I'm down for that. Let's see it. Give it a go. It's only going to take 15 weeks, so he possibly could even do it in the offseason. It might be a little bit of a weird, unorthodox, jumbled up formation, but just, just hear me out. Wheeland, I'm just going to keep on deep line forward and probably just change it throughout the season. Oscar, though, advanced playmaker. He's got five-star skills, five-star weak foot. Let's try and train him up to be a Metzala, just because it's a different development plan and I kind of want to try them all. They do get their first taste of Champions League football plus it is Euro 2028 year. It's time to level up and get on the plane but now with the official conversion for Emil he doesn't receive any nice little boost there which is concerning. For now though he's undertaken that Shadow Striker training to try and revamp and revive his career. It's kind of the best of both worlds. As soon as we got hit with some bad news we got hit with some good news. We have Erasmus who's out for seven weeks thanks to an injury and then he's up in the top four for the Ballon d'Or nominees. Him, Vinicius Jr., Jota, and Mbappe are all gunning for the prize. So who's it going to be? An injured Hoyland or the same old story? And this is looking like it has got the Danes win written all over it as he takes home his first golden ball. He's really showing up his younger brothers right now. Experience and age is proving to be a critical factor as I believe that he's the first Danish player, unless Laudrup won it, but I think he's the first Danish player at least least in a while, to take home the Golden Ball and be crowned the best player in world football. He's ended it off on a high, and hopefully 2028, the boys can represent Denmark for the Euros. Erasmus starts up front, but Oscar's lost his starting place in midfield, but this is all subject to change. And just like Drizzy, the Hoyland triplets are going back to back, securing their Premier League title again and defending the crown. It's just too easy at the moment. They've strolled into the Premier League and are lapping it up. It was another title run that was a Decided on the final day by one point again. They're winning it by the skin of their teeth against the North London rivals Arsenal. Putting them in their place. Runners up. And the Danes just cannot be stopped right now. Winning the FA Community Shield to perfectly launch Season 5. 1-0 against Chelsea. Couldn't make the FA Cup as it's Rotherham and she the former employer Sheffield Wednesday making it all the way to an FA Cup final. And Spurs were eliminated quite early on in Round 3 to Arsenal 3-2. But we ended up getting the last laugh. So I'm not really too bothered about that and the Carabao was a 3-2 loss on Ag to Liverpool 3-2 and in the Champions League they came up against their hometown club Copenhagen in the group stages 16 points finished on top against Bayern they won against them on penalties in the round of 16 in the quarters got the better of Barcelona 4-2 but it all came crumbling down against Real Madrid in the semis with a 4-1 loss only one trophy to show for but arguably probably the most important as they now focus up on the Euros of 2028 and Thankfully, Denmark have qualified. Thank the Lord. Drawn into Group C alongside Italy, Germany, and rival Sweden. So it's not going to be a fun time. They avoided the qualifiers altogether and went just straight into the bracket. How did the Emil centre forward experiment fare? Because in almost half a decade of playing together, he is still the bottom of the pack. The lesser of the three, officially converted, moving up to the 80s range. As a rotational squad member, he's packing in 12 goals in 47 appearances and... Yeah, he, I mean, his career's not over. I'm not writing him off whatsoever, but he might just kind of be like that 10 to 15 goal a season type attacker or striker. And that's nothing against the guy. I mean, everyone's got to serve their purpose, serve their role. He's the third highest goal scorer at the club. We've got to put some respect on his name, but I'm just trying to insinuate that he ain't winning a Ballon d'Or anytime soon. He's probably not going to win a golden boot either because his big bro Rasmus is racking in all the goals, finding the back of the net 30 times, five assists in all competitions, and the Ballon d'Or winner was standing on B 
business with 35 gold contributions and average 7.32 match ratings. Improved again a plus one, just like Emil. And now down to Oscar, who's gotten himself a nice little plus two upgrade. He has gotten his call up to the national team with 10 goals and 17 assists. Again, 27 gold contributions, and he's just a perfect all rounder. An absolute brute force Metzala that needs to be studied. Two time Premier League winners, Hoyland about to enter his prime. The other two twins are still on the come up. We've pretty much assembled their best starting 11 on paper. It's given like a low key dark horse kind of vibe. I'm, I'm not even going to lie. The midfield engine right here, the core is probably their strength and big boy Hoyland up top surely should be bagging a few goals. Now, thanks to BCHD at the helm, all three Hoyland brothers are not only playing together at club level, but for their country. They're all involved and in the starting 11. So here goes nothing. No, don't get excited. Denmark didn't go all the way and win the Euros. I just wanted to show off the real life trophy. Thanks to this mod I've got installed. There it is in all its stunning glory. Did any of our team make the team in the tournament? No, it was just dominated by Belgian and Netherlands players. With the 2028 Euros, Denmark actually made it out the group this time, finishing second in that little group at death. So that was a promising showing and then matched up against England in the quarters was always going to be a tough ask and a 2-1 elimination. They went out with a fight and ended up being a Benelux derby in the final. Belgium versus Netherlands. The Red Devils came away with that 2-1 win. So what were they able to conjure up? We got Rasmus only with one goal in contrast to his three in World Cup 2026. So that's a little bit of a disappointment. We've got Emil's debut in the national team and he didn't manage to contribute whatsoever. Still got three appearances though. And then Oscar from midfield pulled something off. He got one assist to his name and that was his debut for his nation too. A Euros run that kind of just fizzled out. So we've had enough for that until the 2030 World Cup rolls around. We can focus in and really readjust for season six. I'm going to wait for some offers to come through. Not going to put them on the transfer list this time though. I'm just going to wait and see how the market reacts and if any bids come our way after their performances with Denmark. Oh, you know what? I might be a little bit tempted by this offer. PSG have rolled on through with a 68.6 .6 million pound bid for Oscar. And for some reason, he's always the one attracting all the moves. Why not experience a different league, a different country and see them ball out in the Farmers League? All right, was that a mistake? Would we get another offer? We do Manchester United this time for Hoyland again. It's like pre-programmed into the game that the Red Devils want him on the roster. But I just don't see the vision and it's going to go through it. Isn't it? Yeah, we're gonna walk him out and Oscar again for the third time in a row will be the catalyst of the Hoyland brothers jumping ship. The Parc de Prince is about to receive a Danish invasion and they don't even know it yet. They are clueless to what is about to arrive at their doorstep. For 68.6 .6 million pounds, Oscar Hoyland is at it again. You should be used to it by now, but we've completed the triple transfer, the triple change, and the Danish boys have arrived in the capital of love, or the city of love, I should say. Oh my days, man. I'm just thinking about the combo up top. Prime Hoyland, 93 rated with a 93 rated Mbappe. That could be the best strike duo in world football. I'm sorry, Emil, but you just don't cut the mustard anymore. I, I wish I converted you into a winger sooner, but he's just going to have to go by the wayside. He's just going to have to cope at left wing. Meanwhile, we've got Oscar in the middle of the park running the show with Xavi Simmons, feeding balls up front to these two. It is going to be scary hours out here in Paris. This is the new revolution. This is where it's at. And I can't believe I didn't cover this sooner, but here's just an overview of all the roles I've given them. Basically, Rasmus the captain, he's also on penalty duty. There'll be no debates about who's taking the spot kicks here with Mbappe and pretty much Oscar is controlling everything else to do with set pieces. So corners, free kicks, you name it. Meanwhile, their instructions, I've got them laid out here. Free roam cover sent up for Oscar in the middle of the park. Rasmus is on stay central, get in behind and stay forward. Meanwhile, for Emil, we're focusing on staying forward and cutting inside. Side. Thanks to the help of PC mods, I've dished out a couple of play styles and Emil, probably the one that needs the help the most. We've handed in some freebies and we've gone with the finesse shot, chip shot, power shot, first touch and acrobatic play styles. All those traits added to his arsenal. I don't think that'll make him too OP. Meanwhile, on the flip side for Oscar, we've gone with just a pass master. Incisive pass, ping pass, long ball pass, ticky tacker, whipped pass, technical, quick step, relentless. He's the whole damn package and then some. As Rasmus already had a 
had a rapid flare and quick step from the get-go. I think now these two have earned their fair share of traits, so, so let them have it. Now, it's probably the easiest charge to a league title you will ever see, but in Liga Uber Eats, PSG are just at the top of the game right now. Nobody can come in between them and the title. 87 points. It was nearly a 20-point gap between them and second. I mean, it's just an absolute joke. Maybe the Farmers League was too easy of a competition to move the Hoylands to as they won the Trophy de Champions on penalties 1-0. How do you even win a penalty shootout 1-0? Like, has that ever even happened before? They couldn't even take out the Coupe de France either. Getting eliminated early on in the round of 16, not even. Round of 32 type B. Okay, losing 3-2 to Lorient. So only a French double to boast about and in the Champions League. Finished second only to Bayern Munich in Group D. And then it was an early elimination over in the quarterfinals. 4-2 to Milan. After they bypassed Real Sociedad, the UCL was kind of the only competition they have left to win besides that and the Conference League, but who, who wants to win the Conference League? I mean, Rasmus's own club, United, are winning that, so you can just see the levels he's at now. Oh my god, I just, I just clocked that. Tottenham were in the Champions League final after selling all the Hoylands. Nah, bro. Car, that's... There's no way, bro. Oh, that could have been their moment to lift the Holy Grail, you know. And no, they didn't win the Champions League. Rafa Liao with the trophy in red and black ribbons, and Spurs have bottled another Champions League final. Without the Hoylands, they are just destined for failure. In terms of the top goal scorer at the club, it wasn't Rasmus as he couldn't outscore Mbappe. He couldn't even outdo him on the goal contributions front with 20 goals and 2 assists. Not improving for the first time in his career so far. No upgraded hand to do him. And we've got Emil down here with 5 goals and 1. Like I said, he's just kind of that mid-middle brother that no one, not no one really cares about, but you know what I mean. Like, he's not going to become an elite top level striker. He's just going to live in his brother's shadow, which is unfortunate unless he can prove me wrong. I I'm open to being proved wrong as Oscar Hoyland five goals and nine assists you'd think after all those play styles we gave him he'd have a few more assists to boast about but only 14 goal contributions believe it or not Oscar doesn't have a single maxed out attribute which is fascinating 94 stamina is his strong point Hoyland has a couple acceleration composure strength all maxed out and don't forget ball control dribbling and finishing all standing at a 99 and Emil's highest attribute is coming in at a 91 with acceleration at least Oscar grabbed the Player of the Month award to finish off the season on a high to prove to the Parisians why they splashed all that cash on him in the first place as we wrap up Season 6. It's a World Cup year. 2030 World Cup is right around the corner. And the boys are desperate to write their name up in lights and solidify this Hoyland family legacy. For Rasmus this year, I want to switch things up and turn him into a complete forward just to focus on the general aspects of his game. Long shots, volleys definitely need some improvements. With Emil, I'm just going to opt for Shadow Striker, maybe just even balanced and work on everything. And Oscar is going to change up to a roaming playmaker training. We're applying all the development plans, making sure they're fresh, new, and going to achieve the best results for this trio as they line up in a pretty competent side. I'm not going to lie, they should be well and truly diving deep into the Champions League as this is probably one of their last seasons to go get it. Now, if you thought last year was a stroll in the park for the Ligue 1 title, look at that 30 point gap between PSG and that Rene. 96 points for the Invincible Parisians and the Hoyland brothers are on cloud nine. I mean, if we even decide to continue after the World Cup, we might have to look for a move away. This is just too easy, man. A 4-1 win against Lille in the Trophée de Champions, but were they able to come home in the Coupe de France? And you bet they did. With a 1-0 win against Caen in the big dance, and that means that it's a domestic treble. No matter how many times they dominate French football, PSG just do what PSG do best and fumble in the Champions League. They made it all the way to the semi-finals, matched up against Arsenal, and they copped a 3-0 second leg loss. They came out top of the group undefeated. Round 16 took down Liverpool 2-1. Quarterfinals taught Man United a lesson, but it was too much. You know what? I'd take a World Cup win over the Champions League at this rate, and thankfully, let's have a look through the groups. Yeah, there you go. Denmark qualified, drawn into Group C, alongside Spain, Wales, and Morocco, so they should be looking to get out of that group. Ooh, look at that group. Group of death though, Argentina, France, Belgium, Romania. The 95 rated Hoyland needs to step up if he wants to carry his nation. But they definitely have some firepower to come in off the bench. Some super subs if needed, like the younger Hoyland brother, Lindstrom, Isaacson. The Danish dark horse is ready to set sail. It's a very front heavy team though. Look at that, 95 rated attack, 82 rated midfield, and a 79 rated defense. Completely forgot about this. The World Cup sidetracked me, but Hoyland again, Rasmus couldn't overtake
take Mbappe and outscore him, even though he's still growing despite him being 27. And he's showing no signs of slowing down. 36 goal contributions in 41 appearances. Emil down here with four goals and one off the bench. And it was a relatively quiet campaign for Oscar, as I do believe he had kind of an injury riddled season. Three goals and seven assists, 10 goal contributions for the 87 rated 25 year old. I don't know what the future holds, but we're definitely pushing for a change of scenery come season eight. Hold up, hold up, hold the phone. I've simulated up until this point, and the Danes have reached the semi finals up against none other than the 2028 Euro champions, Belgium. By the way, they've had a miraculous run, had no problems in the group stages, finishing on top with nine points, beating every single nation. A 2 0 win against Morocco in the round of 16, and a remarkable penalty shootout victory up against Portugal 4 3, which has seen them come this far. Oh, but there's some bad news. Oscar's been a bad boy. Also, Skov Olsen, one of our best wingers. Now, can Denmark do it without two of their best players? Without one third of the Hoyland trio, we're going to quick sim this one, and it's a 3 0 win. Oh, my days. Neither of the Hoylands on the score sheet, as it's Isaacson, Durami, and Nikolaysen to get the third and the final nail in the coffin. Denmark are going to the final. This is probably going to be the biggest moment in their careers. Hoyland versus Mbappe in the big dance, and it's all going down. They're gonna have to do it without their captain and best defender, Christensen, though, because he's copped an injury. Nicolaysen will take his spot, which is unfortunate. Now, here's how the French are lining up. We all know how dangerous and overpowered they are in Karimo. They've got Zaire Emery, Kamavinga in midfield, and Mbappe leading the lineup top. Theo Hernandez is captain. It is gonna take something incredible to stop them tonight. Every single time I've done a tactical view in a video, something crazy has happened. So, you know what? We're gonna watch it play out and see if Denmark can cause a major upset in this all-European bout. Oh, baby, I said they were a dark horse, but I didn't expect this level of competence and just this incredible run. You can see some of the posters from France's 2018 World Cup win. They want to replicate that 12 years later. And Denmark, I know they've won the Euros. I know they've been successful in their own right, but never to something on this level. With the world watching, let's see if these Danes can continue to gallop. Oh, come on. It's just too easy for the French. Oh, no, it's in Kunku. That has dealt the blow. And the opening blow, the first shot on target. And France make no mistake. Sacre bleu. Oh, my days, man. The defense without Christensen is all over the place. And the goalie, what are you doing, blood? Free kick here in a dangerous area for the Danes. And what was that? Over to Hoyland. Back on over to Hoyland. And the Hoyland trio, they're linking up quite nicely here. They're desperate for the equalizer. We've got Got Oscar in the box and it's deflected. He shot O'Reilly finds Hoylemelens and oh, that was a golden moment. They've got France on the ropes here, low key. Over to Skov Olsen who's having the tournament of his life, but Mike Magnon is making sure he keeps his clean sheet. Shouts for a penalty there, but Danes continue and again Mike Magnon to the rescue. Rasmus Hoyland with a Sneaky little bit of build-up play, and he's held it up well. Passing it through to the electric Scott Olsen. And can he get it into the back of the net? He does. Sneaking it by Smagnon. And he picks the ball out the back. He wants to get the winner. This guy, he's having the tournament of his life. And the Danes, they're really here to play. We got Lorient, France. Want to have the final say before the first half is over. And Mbappe. Oh, come on, guys. They couldn't hold out for a couple more minutes. It's Le Bleu to stamp their trade mark on this game with an Mbappe goal and our keeper is having an absolute shit show. Here we go, Denmark. They want another equaliser. O'Reilly Rasmus was there to tap it home but he was just a little bit too late. Flying through and Lorient for the third but Hermansen gets down low. Fires on over to Musa Diaby and there it is for the third. Oh, dearie, dearie me. And it's a repeat of the 2018 World Cup final where France just look like they're running away with it. Just too good on the night. And the Danes go 3-1 down and it's looking like their World Cup dream is starting to crumble. Yabi cuts it back. Kolomuani again, another one of their teammates. And we've just made some substitutions. But France just show no mercy in these kinds of games. We saw it with Theo Zidane and his French national team. And now when you're up against them, they're just impossible to beat in Korea mode. There's our changes coming through. We're just mixing and matching. We're just putting on some attacking players, but I think it's a little bit too late now. 
Oh, Hoyland, what a ball. That is a defense splitting pass. And Lindstrom fresh off the bench. He should have been full of energy. A nice little one, too, with Oscar. And where was that the whole game? That came out of nowhere. And now all of a sudden they think it's time to celebrate. Get the ball out the back of the net. You still need two more goals to send this into extra time. But Lindstrom's happy with himself. The Danes couldn't care less, to be honest. Being 4-2 down, four minutes left. It's not looking good, bruv. Oh, my God. They could be in for a third here. There's only two minutes of added time. Come on, Tarami, fresh off the bench, needs to cut it back to Hoyland. There's an opportunity here to squeeze in a third, and it's not to be. It's so over. The referee puts Denmark out of their misery. They needed to get humbled. They came this far. They've done so much for Danish football, and I guess Denmark's luck just ran out. What? What is this camera angle, bro? <laughs> this game really is, is testing my patience. Oh, oh, someone's ass is in the camera now. Beautiful, beautiful scenes. YouTube, don't demonetize me, please. We must consider we had Erasmus with an assist, Oscar with an assist. They were involved. They've got to hold their heads up high. But unfortunately, come home second best to the French. And why are they celebrating in front of our fans, bro? Have a bit of class. The six goal thriller in the end, and I think we deserve to see one more fairy tale farewell season. As their overall stats for the World Cup read a little bit like this. Like I said, we had Dorami, Isaacson, and Skov Olsen stealing the show with four goals goals. I mean, it was just the unsung heroes. Like, the Hoylands re didn't really do much besides Oscar. Two goals and two assists and six appearances. We had Hoyland, who really disappointed. One goal and two assists. He needed to step up if Denmark had any chance. And Bappe just overshadowed him like he did on the club level. And Emil, not really much impact in and off the bench. Only three appearances. Nobody remembers the runners-up. History just focuses on the winners. Here we go. First transfer offer of the summer and it's Juventus. Oh, and also Real Madrid for Rasmus. We've got a choice to make. Decisions, people. They're trying to swap a 32-year-old Chiesa into the deal. Meanwhile, it's another swap deal coming our way for Rasmus. They're trying to swap over Vinny Jr. You know what, guys? I just can't do it. I've just seen U of A slap Frosinone 4-0 this morning, and I've gotten barely any sleep because of it. So, I just have to side with Real Madrid here. We're going to accept the offer from the Galacticos. Ooh, we had an offer for Oscar as well from Manchester United. So, yeah, for the first time, it is not Oscar is doing. We're finally getting a different brother to move them into a different direction. Okay, we're not seeing the sale animation. It is going to be Vinny Jr. walking through the Parisian doors. And that's how you know the transfer has been triggered. Rasmus jets off to Spain and it is going to be a major money move. £35 million pounds plus the Brazilian at the top of his game. The former Ballon d'Or winner doesn't look too happy about his move. But I'm sure all three of them are going to kill it at the Bernabeu. They've just come off losing a World Cup final there. Now they're going to play every single week at the Bernabeu. Yeah, you can't write this stuff. Trust the simulation. Trust the process. Both of his younger brothers have followed in his footstep and now finally he is carving a pathway for the both of them. Their starting 11 is good. And then the substitutes and the bench is just completely mid. They have no squad quality depth whatsoever. It is just the most random combination of signings you're ever going to see. I've experienced it every single time we have moved to a new team, especially the big clubs. For old time's sake, we're throwing in Emil up front as a centre forward with Razzie. And then we've got Oscar sitting right behind them. For the final swan song, I just want to run it back and see what these three can cook up all together in the attack in that front trident. It's all or nothing if they they want to take home a major piece of silverware like the Champions League. They missed their World Cup opportunity. Let's all come down to this. Okay, okay, we're drawing the curtain on Season 8 and it's the Hoylands who've come through to Spain on a mission. 86 points on the final day. Again, it's decided down to the wire. That's how they love to win their titles back in the Premier League days at least. Coming through not only French, English but Spanish champions, Danish champions as well. Completely forgot. But they have just joined juggernauts of the European game everywhere they've gone. Unfortunately in the Supercopa de España lost out to Barca 3-1 in a El Clasico and in the Copa del Rey unfortunately couldn't make it through to the final early elimination in the round of 16 to Real Sociedad. However Madrid's bread and butter. It's the Champions League. It's the flagship competition they always want to win. And the Hoyland trio made sure to put their best foot forward continentally. Finishing with a 100% record in Group H coming through qualifying for the round of 16. 
scene where they took down Leverkusen 5-1 on Ag. Next up was the quarters where they defeated Bayern 4-2, another German opposition, and against Arsenal in the semis. They didn't falter like they did with PSG, got their revenge with a 5-3 aggregate win. How do these scenarios keep popping up? I swear you can't write scripts like these. They just fumble onto my lap, and we're here left with a juicy storyline of Real Madrid v PSG in the big dance. All the hype, all the build-up has all led up to this, and it's going to be the final game of their careers in this video. Let's see if the brotherly love can overcome PSG, who are just stacked in up front. We've also got the Vinicius Junior storyline, Mbappe, who's always flirted with Real Madrid. So many connections in these two squads. They're going to be a tough team to beat. PSG, they're always on their ones. So we're going to put our blind faith in the quick sim. We're going to put the fate of the Hoylands in the hands of the Realism mod. And an 83rd minute winner has been scored, not by any of the Hoylands though, but it was Rasmus to get them started in the 22nd minute. And they ended up winning 2-1 with 7 minutes to spare, which crowns them the European champions. But that was the one piece of silverware they've been hunting down, they've been craving. And it's a bittersweet ending because I know they fumbled the World Cup final, but at least they have that Champions League title to their name. Let the celebrations commence, let the party start, because the Hoylands, everywhere they've gone, they've won silverware. Everywhere they've gone, they successfully turn clubs into great clubs and add to their trophy cabinet whilst they're at it. It'd be nice to see them unite, at least maybe just for one season in real life. It's probably never gonna happen, but a man can dare to dream. Let me know how you'd rate their careers down in the comments below. I know it's hard to compare to the older brother, the Ballon d'Or winner. The game is game, and not everyone can be a superstar. As we check in on their final production stats, it was Rasmus in the end with 38 goals and 6 assists, the main striker, and to do it alongside his younger brother, I mean, Emil, he's never gonna score more goals than him, but at least he's up there with him having fun. Showing off that family chemistry in the attack. And that is almost 53 goals between them. A strike duo for the ages. He just turns out to be kind of mid. I mean, he's in his prime. He could have some better years ahead of him. But I don't really see him turning it around as Oscar. He conjured up 21 goal contributions in 51 appearances again. Doing it with his brothers at Real Madrid. He's living the dream. These guys have gone from playing football in their backyards over in Denmark. Now to playing for one of the biggest clubs in the world. And to do it eight seasons in a row. They followed each other everywhere and the loyalty is at an all-time high as I kept everything on balance this year I just wanted to see how they progress and we had a plus one upgrade for Oscar as the two strikers up front stayed the same Their final transfer market valuations We have Hoyland finishing up with a 132.5 million pound price tag and we've nearly had the peak for Oscar with 59 million pounds as a meal He was always the third thrown to the wayside couldn't quite reach their elite levels, but had a very notable career Career, a market value of 23 million pounds to see out the vid. Make sure to let me know down in the comments below what are the brother combinations, duos, trios, hell, even four. I don't know if there's any four brothers in FIFA, but you guys always seem to know the go. It is all up to you lads below and DMing me on Instagram or Twitter. I respond to the popular demand. Whatever you want, I will deliver. As always, if you've made it this far and enjoyed the journey, make sure to drop the video a like down below. Hit subscribe, turn on the notifications so you never miss out on any fresh new content coming to the channel. Keep it locked and loaded here as we venture through to 2024 and beyond. As always, I've been your boy, Sir BCHD. Have a great day, and I'll catch you all in the very next video. Bye-bye.